Mrs. Tara Feladorotoye is a beauty entrepreneur who pioneered the professional makeup industry in Nigeria in the late 90s. She is the founder and current CEO of House of Tara International. She is considered a major force in the Nigerian female entrepreneurship community, having created an impact business that has empowered tens of thousands of beauty entrepreneurs through the Tara Beauty Entrepreneur initiative. She continues to be a thought leader and major influencer through several in-classroom and online courses that focus on sharing her 20 plus years experience with other budding entrepreneurs. As a game changer in the Nigerian business, Mrs. Tara has served as a powerful role model for women in business and worked as an advocate for creating awareness of the importance of building businesses that positively improve impact society. She is a huge advocate of impact entrepreneurship and is considered the poster girl for female entrepreneurship in West Africa. Under her leadership, House of Tara emerged one of Joboman's best 100 companies to work for in Nigeria 2017 and continues to be considered the number one indigenous makeup brand for Nigerian women. She has received several national and international awards for her contribution to the industry and active role in entrepreneurship and empowerment. The most outstanding businesswoman of the year 2018 by the African Economy Builders Awards, Ivory Coast. The African Makeup Icon by Ghana Makeup Awards in 2018. Leadership Award for Entrepreneurship by Harvard Business School Association of Nigeria. The Award of Excellence for Social Impact and Job Creation, a national recognition by the Vice President of Nigeria in 2019. The Entrepreneurship Lifetime Achievement Award by the Business Insider Africa in 2022. She was on Forbes list of 20 young power women in Africa in 2013. Forbes list of top 50 most powerful women in 2020. She's an alumnus of the Lagos Business School Executive Program inside Abu Dhabi. Yale University, the Stanford Seed Transformation Program, and the Harvard Kennedy School, having completed the global leadership and public policy in the 21st century. She serves on several boards, which includes Bridge International Academies, African Women Entrepreneurship Cooperative, New York. She is an associate member of Women in Management and Business, WIMBYS. She was recognized by the World Economic Forum as a young global leader in 2013. Choisel Institute of, of France Top 100 um, Young African Business Leaders Under 40, 2014. Tara enjoys gardening and loves experiencing new cultures. She is married to Felado Rotoye and has three sons. Please join me to welcome this phenomenal guest, a trailblazer, a game changer, and a woman thought leader, Mrs. Tara Felado Rotoye. Thank, Thank you so much Thank for joining for us. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we'll go right into it. Okay. So today I'd like to um, ask you a few questions on how you got into this space. What are the things that you have experienced mm. during this time? Mm. Um, the challenges you probably have or may not have um, encountered. And then of course, how you've been able to navigate your way through. Mm. And so let's go. Um, some people, especially women, mm. have um, their skepticism when it comes to investing in real estate. Can you share what you know caused that major mind shift for you? Mm -hmm. How did you get into this space? Tell mm -hmm. us your story. Really. Um, so in my case, I think how you're raised and what you're exposed to makes a world of difference. Um, I, I was raised in a family where my grandfather owned um, real estate in, in my small village in, I wouldn't call it, I'm sure people would be upset here, I call it a village, but it was, it was once a city in Delta State called Sapele, 
Uh, Sapele was a, was a merchant city. Um, there was, you know, body of water and people were um, invested in building buildings and, and moving timber and fisheries and, and things like that. My grandfather was, was an entrepreneur but, but was very passionate about, about real estate investment. So I grew up knowing that my dad had access to the funds that came from my grandfather's real estate. I didn't, I didn't meet my grandfather. He had passed away in, in the 1950s. Um, but the house where we spent Christmas and uh, celebratory seasons was a house that was built in 1910, right? Mm -hmm. um, what that meant was I saw real estate that been preserved in my family. Mm -hmm. um, that house is still standing today wow. after more than 100 years. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one. Two, it was the fact that across, around that house were, were shops and stalls that, you know, were owned by my family. There were some of them were anchor tenants like Chella Rams, for example, who were distributors of bicycles and the things maybe in the 1960s. Mm -hmm. But because they were anchor tenants, their name was inscribed in the building, the brick of the house. So I saw those names. Um, and so I was used to the concept of seeing how a generation uh, wealth can be transformed from one generation to, to the other because, because of real estate. Even though my grandfather died early, my, my father was still able to go to Cambridge University. And the reason why was because there was a fund that was still steadily. Now, the money from that, from that um, fund is, is trivial today because it's nothing, right? Because obviously the economic value around, you know, economic value and the activities of that town have reduced, oh, sure. you know, so it's now literally less than a village, right? But the concept still exists, which is that even if it's only 100,000 naira that is being recovered from tenants, it was something that somebody that had foresight had invested in the 1910s and 1920s. And today in 2000s and, and, and the likes, we can still see that that's one. It's still preserved. It's still preserved. Secondly, my grandmother my, on my father's side was also very big on real estate investment. So if I went to visit my grandmother, she had tenants. So if I went to spend a holiday with her, she would be having quarrels with her tenants. She would be, there would be issues. So I knew who her tenants were. I knew the family that was, that hadn't paid the rent. I knew, you know, the issues around. So yes, on my father's side, this was a massive uh, structured real estate. On my mother's side, it was still fragmented, but I could see, I heard conversations. And, and I think sometimes, even if my mother, my grandmother didn't say to me, you must invest in real estate, it's like going to school and, and being educated because you come from a family where everyone is educated. And I think real estate became a part of me from that time. My mom is in her 70s, still very passionate about, about real estate because that's what she was also exposed to. So the conversation is always about what is left, what, you know, what did your father leave, what did your grandfather leave? There's that conversation, what did they leave? So it, it became part of me and I didn't even know until when I started to earn. Um, but even though when I started to earn, I didn't automatically start to invest in real estate. I had an encounter with someone who said to me, for the type of business that you are in, I see that all your money is invested in your business. I want you to do more and diversify your investment. And it was the end of GT Bank. At the time, his name was Tired, past late Tired in Oko. And I'd had, I had a meeting with him and then this said to me, he said, you can start very Little. Today, I know him as a massive, someone who invested in lots of real estate, but at the time I didn't know. He just gave that counsel and said, you know, it's good that you invested in your business, but I think you should also do this. And he said to me, you don't have to buy in a Kikoi or VI, okay. because I think he almost felt like a lot of times people are fixated on, on, on what they can't buy. Mm -hmm. And so they, it prevents them from actually taking the step. That conversation I had with him was for me the moment that attached my experience and my exposure to my reality today. Amazing, wow. Um, sometimes, sometimes you actually need those conversations, even though you had grown up in the, in the family where real estate was a big thing. I don't think it, it clicked as much as that conversation. And so being at the right place, within, within the right circle, also does the magic. Amazing. So in your experience, what is the key to ensuring that investors make the right decision the first time in, in, in regarding to choosing who to invest through? So I have never been, I have never been, um, really been, I've never experienced where, you know, a, I was a bad transaction. A bad transaction. Okay. And I think the reason why is because I just follow track record. Amazing. Right? So I've stuck with the same set of people that I've worked with 
right? Whether it's the agent that I've worked with for years, um, I work with the same agent. If it's the same real estate company I work with, I consistent. So I haven't moved around. And I've stayed consistent with the people that I've worked with, and that has saved me. And in a sense, maybe I'm not ready to take the risk. I don't have too much money to 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 take that sort of risk. And so, starting early, I needed to be sure of who I was investing because this is hard earned money from doing one makeup, two makeup, three makeup, right? And so, it became important to me. And and I haven't really moved, so I've stuck with the same set of people. As the years have gone by, I found some other people, and sometimes it is because of who it is that reference that introduced me. So. Who you speak to using your network. So, oh, this person says to me, oh, TFD, there's this, so, so, and so, so, so. You, can, you have the audacity and the right to share that information with me because I know you and I trust you that you've done your homework. And then based on that, I've, I've now, in some cases, opened my, my net wider because of those sort of references. Yeah. Um, what it basically means is you first did your homework before you started investing. And I haven't been moving around, so I've stuck with, so I, I've tried you, tested and tried, I stay there. And then if I'm going to open my net, it's because the person who has recommended you has the capacity to do so yes. because of my own experience of them. Yeah. Yes. And so um, what you're saying is, when you're trying to do real estate, make sure you do your homework and do not take unnecessary risk. Don't take on that and don't be jumping up by that. Why I want to say that is because I've had an encounter with a client and his wife had an opposite opinion. She felt he was concentrating his risks. Yes. So don't you feel... No, because, because it's a huge risk to take, right? Um, so there's some developers who, who, who are constantly looking to conquer new markets. Okay. They will continue to conquer new markets. I follow them. Now who no road? Now you go follow. Correct. So if that same uh, developer is doing something in Ibadan and comes to me, well, I already have a track record with this person. I've done stuff with this person in Ekwe, and I did something with this person in Aba. Then we go to Ibadan together. If he says he's moving to Liberia, then we go to Liberia together. That's how I have spread my risk. I spread my risk within the confines Amazing. of the structure Amazing. that I currently. Amazing. Uh, you're not about to take unnecessary risk because you want to build real estate. That's what I want you to hear. Okay, um, what is your opinion about women owning real estate? Do you think more women should own real estate and why? Well, <laughs> I come from a culture where women are very powerful. I come from the Niger Delta. Uh, we have a very matriarchal society. So women have investment. Women are entrepreneurs and they make money, they send their children to school. It's just what I know. Um, so to ask that question, is almost like it's, a, it's an odd question. <laughs> Why are we even asking, right? Well, yes. I think because you mentioned also that we're in a patriarchal society, a lot of women are still held back with the fact that um, growing up, they know that only men should own land. Yes, so, so I come from a matriarchal society, not patriarchal. So that's what I'm exposed to, matriarchal, yes. So that's what I'm exposed to. However, I acknowledge there's some societies where this is. But my darlings, let's even leave me out of it and say, okay, we all come from a patriarchal society, which is predominantly what Nigeria is. Mm -hmm. The truth of the matter is that we do this real estate not just because we want to have power, we do it because we also want to secure the future for our children. Yes. Okay. And, and many times, and, and this is what I say, I, because I talk about economic empowerment a lot for women, I, I, the, some of the strong questions I've had to ask is, if anything happens to your husband today, what happens, what happens to you? Right? And women have to think to themselves, if my husband is currently paying school fees for the children, and this is a question that a, a friend of mine asked me many years ago, he said, this business that you are doing, if your husband is not here, can your children still go to the school that your children are going to now? And I had to ask myself, can I fund the current lifestyle that I have? And I realized I could. And that for me was very important. And I think it's one way to also track, right? Whatever business you're doing, are you able to fund the lifestyle that you currently live? Because when your husband sees that you're working hard and you're, and you're bringing more to the table, the respect and the regard that he has for you is high. And, and the truth, to be honest, respect comes with achievements, right? We honor you just because you are my wife, but sometimes respect comes because you have achieved. And what are you achieving with your hands? Um, and how responsible are you with the, with the resource that you have? So you're building your business consistently. And you're showing, showing to say, I'm putting this aside for this. When he's having conversations about your future, 
you can be part of that conversation because you have proven yourself to be somebody who's worthy of that conversation. And these are our realities, right? We do it for our children, we do it to, res to get res gain respect, and we also do it for our own self-esteem. I have a client who um, purchased a property from me for her husband for his birthday. He was so amazed. I shared the story recently on, yeah, and that spurred him to come buy more for their family. So even if you're not doing it for yourself alone, you can be doing it for your family. I'm sure maybe he would um, be interested in doing real estate. But the singular fact that she did it, she's like, yes. Ah, and he came and, back and, and he worked And it's possible that he also has more resources. Yes, he does. But then, he it just because, priority. Yes, he just needed that push. Oh. And that, you know, gave all the push that he required. Oh. I know it goes beyond just us. Yes. It's, it's something that your children would see and learn yes. from yes. and, you know, yes. continue to grow with. Yes. So, I don't think women should limit themselves mm. because we still are. Mm. We still are. I mm. still see it. Mm. You know. What are the benefits of investing in real estate? Do you have experiences to share so far on your journey in relation to the gains you have gotten from real estate? So, in, in terms of gains, um, of course, in terms of you know, as a business owner, you want to get a bank loan you need in Nigeria you have to collateralize Amazing. your loan mm -hmm. so you need real estate sometimes you need property and what have you in the past I always used to say my stock my stock my stock and the bank said to me you know we want something more tangible Dibble. and so um, that is one one sometimes it's, it's to trade um, you have something so for example when I started my real estate journey I used to buy things that were not in, in areas that were not really as viable right mm -hmm. Um, so because I was starting very small, mm. um, so I, back in the days, they used to have something called, uh, it's a part of Lagos called Moe, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. I we did quite a few of things I had there. an experience in Moe, Moe right? <laughs> <laughs> I, right? I didn't have a good experience, but that's there, okay. Yes. And, mm. and in some of those places, some, some of those areas that are not necessarily uh, viable, right? And then what you can do is, years after you, you, you sell it off, and then you can then put it at what you currently have and put in a more viable um, a place. Uh, they you also would have stored value. You have stored value as well. Uh, and there are also it's rental value, just that, you know, in Nigeria, rental value in terms of um, co co it's not commensurate with what you've invested in, in, in the place. However, just the fact that you have that there and it's in some, there are some places where you know that the rent comes from this part, part of, the, of the year, this is what you now invest in putting your in your holidays, right? Mm -hmm. yes. In other cases, the money that comes from there, you put in other investments. Mm -hmm. uh, but but I, I know people, for example, who have sold houses to send their children to school, right? Uh, we haven't had, maybe we haven't gotten to there yet, right? Uh, but we've never had to do so. But the people who have said, you know, it was because I sold that land to finish my son's education. Mm -hmm. That's not the only thing that they had, mm -hmm. but they had enough acro around that they could take out this for that purpose. Um, so, um, for me, I also think we think about it from a from a from a stored investment standpoint. So you know, you you have made this investment, you've spent thirty million. You may not have cash of thirty million, but this is the investment that you've made, and you have thirty million in many cases with the growth. I remember some of some of the real estate investment I made where between two years I saw the growth, right? In, if I wanted to resell, minimum 30, 40, 40 percent, percent yes. right? Between when I first made the investment. And, and next, and so if what I investment invested here um, was X amount of money, and I'm seeing the, it's quarter pool. For me, it's more inspiration. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't like I always say I don't think there's ever any month since I have been actively as an entrepreneur that I haven't invested in real estate. Mm -hmm. There's there's always I'm always on a project. I've never not had a, pro a real estate project, and I've shot a minimum of ten to fifteen years, and wow. it's not because I started with a big equity project. I said very small, but I done it. Con and this is what Taya Dunuko said to me. He said, just start small, keep doing it. And you get into the culture of doing it. And that's exactly what has happened. Mm -hmm. That experience is, I now have a culture, culture of, of, doing of doing it. it. Yes. Amazing. Yes. Amazing. So what I've gotten out of this is start small. Yes. And consistently just be consistent. do it. Yes. Whatever you're consistent with After a while, becomes a part of it. Yes. Amazing. Becomes a culture. Um, what advice would you give to women who are single income earners and who think they need all the money in the world to begin real estate investing? I think I've said it and I've said it, I'll say it again. Yeah. Start from where you are. If it's to go and buy in your village, do it. 
you know, my gardener, when he came to me and said to me he had bought a land in his village, I cried. Mm. And I said, ah, how do you get such an idea? He said, my Judah told me. Mm. He said, one day you sat here and you said, you live in my house. There's no rent. Imagine that you're paying rent. Imagine that you're paying rent to me or to any landlord. What I want you to do is to keep that mm. money. And he said, I said, you should contribute, all of you in this house. Do our job. As long as we are staying in this house for free, the only thing you can do to reward me is to save that money. And this name I also say to my friends, my young friends who are living with their parents and are making money. And I say, you have not left home because you don't feel comfortable leaving home. But imagine that you were living by yourself. How much would you be spending on rent? And they tell me, I say, what about the amount is? If you were working from home, working from home, they don't have an office, but they're working from their parents' house. I said, keep, imagine and keep that money aside. And as you're keeping it, you invest. So Hassan bought a land wow. in his village. He called his uncle and said, I want to buy a land, help me look for land in the village. And he now owns a land in the village. As he was telling me this, he said to me, he's even going to buy in Lagos. Amazing. Because and he believes, so yes, he would do it. He believes, but he also has the discipline to say, I'm not thinking, oh, I have to have X. Yes. No. So he did the a job where all of them are working in the same house. There's the cook, there's this, there's the driver, whatever, whatever. They know how much they, they know. Everybody knows when their salary is paid. Yes. They contribute and they create a pool. And each person collects. She, he has a land. My housekeeper has land in her village. Yes. And here, yet again, these are domestic staff who also equally have responsibility. But it's a mindset that you have to have to say, I'm going to start from where I, from where I am. I don't have to have. But that discipline of having, of consistently putting in the money, little by little, when it's time to buy banana, you'll buy. It'll be easier for you it's because you're used to it. It's that easy. Yeah. You just need to discipline start. yourself. Yes. Self-denial. Yes, denial. For Yes. Delayed gratification. Yes, absolutely. Amazing. Amazing. Um, so I, I want to go a little bit personal now. Mm -hmm. As a happily married and independent woman, mm -hmm. every in every sense of that word, what are your thoughts on women who keep their investments away from their spouse? So it's a very tough one. Um, I come from, my relationship is very open. So what belongs to me belongs to us. What belongs to you belongs to us. So we have a pool. But there's some women who, who based on the experience that they've had, they cannot do that. They cannot have a pool because either one spouse is not trustworthy and that's the reality. Sure. And you have to protect yourself. Mm. So I, 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 in the past, I would always say, no, everything has to be open. Everybody has to know what everybody, is. but there's some men, there are some, some men or women are cruel, wicked. Mm. They don't mean you well. And if and you, you have that as a spouse, my dear, you have to protect yourself. You have to protect yourself. And you have to protect yourself in a very smart way. Sometimes do the investment, it's open, but it's with your sisters, which means that the man cannot have access to it. Protect yourself. If it's a, it's a family thing. So you and your sister, that situation, I'm going to give advice. I say, the money do it is... with your family. Yes. So by the time it's my myself, my sister, my brother, my after a while, your husband cannot tell you that you can because he knows you that you can't it's a, sell it. No, because it's, it's a bigger pool. Yes, yes. So you have to think about intelligent ways to do, do it, it, even if you want to be open, right? In such a way that you know, I say to people, you know, put your money in a, in, in in fixed asset. In some some other cases, put your money in a bond that you cannot access in ten years. If you have a husband that is frivolous, for example, or a wife that's frivolous, you have told the wife that the money is in a bond. Nobody, you cannot break it. And therefore, you cannot break it. In that situation, nobody has access to the money. Do you see what I mean? Sure, sure. So there's some of those intelligent ways that you have to think about it. I don't think that that should be a modus operandi for everyone. everyone sure. And I don't think it's, it's fair if your husband, I know situations where the husband is open and the wife isn't because of her own background. I don't think it's fair for you to treat a man who's honest and, and sincere with you with that hand, it's wicked of you, yes, right? Sure. Uh, in my own case, I came into the relationship, my husband was very open. I was not initially as open as he was, but the more he showed me that he was giving me his, his whole heart, I became more, more open. open. And over the years today, we have been married now for 
you know, 21 years. And, so, and yes, and then in 21 years, I look back and I say to myself, I'm grateful that I opened up and what is his is mine and what is mine it's is him. his. And all of us have our different strengths. My husband is not as big as a real estate investor as I am, right? But there are other things that my husband investing and those things, it is for us, but the real estate is also for us. Amazing, amazing. Um, one last question I'd like to ask. I've heard, you know, situations where um, a woman owns a property and somehow gets married mm -hmm. and makes the man pay for that property. Sometimes he's aware, sometimes he's not aware. What do you think about that? Okay, well, yeah, so I've heard that, okay, the woman is, she says, let's move into our, my house. That's but then the, the man, man now pays the rent. He doesn't know. Yes, mm. yes. Then so he now she more or like, more or less becomes the landlord, the landlord. without his knowledge. More I, than think, I think time. I think it's wrong and it's deceit and it's wrong and I th I don't think and then you start a marriage with that, it, it affects how you know it's very important how we start. Trust is important trust, and, trust. and some of these things that we we do can set things in motion and sometimes men also have to understand why some women do that because they already come, maybe they come from a background where their, fa their mothers were cheated by their mm -hmm. husbands. And the being exposed to patterns that your spouse has lived helps you to understand them better. Do you see? And sometimes gives you the opportunity to give them some graces. So if your wife has done that and you look at her background, you cannot sometimes understand why. I know I have a friend who said his wife was very, very secretive. So she went and, and did some real estate investment, didn't tell him, right? But she, but she comes from a family where there was a lot of polygamy. And so called polygamy, people kept oh. secrets. You don't want this wife to hear what you mm -hmm. have been doing. True. Uh -huh. Now, because he knew that about his wife, he had an understanding about her patterns. So he, he also understood why she behaved the way she behaved and therefore extended grace to her. And sometimes we have to think about that. Why did she do that, what she did? Is it really because she was being deceitful or wicked or is it because of her background? Um, and how can we extend grace when we find out as opposed to being com completely co uh, uh, condemned? Um, I don't know if I can make excuses for, for that behavior mm -hmm. um, based on the mm -hmm. narrative that you have given now mm -hmm. because of um, the family and background. Mm -hmm. But it is important that we come out clean mm -hmm. for you know the relationship we know mm -hmm. that is for life. There, so, there has to be balance. Yeah. So there are some situations where the person has made this mistake, for example. So yeah. if your husband is watching this and his wife has done this, I would say, you love, do you love your wife? Yes, you love your wife. You want this relationship. Mm -hmm. I want you to make an excuse for her. Good. And this is the only way we can live in forgiveness. If we start to learn how to make excuses for people, where you say, hmm, why did she do this? Okay? Sometimes it's when we do our premarital, uh, our bridal shower, and auntie comes and says, hey, listen, make sure you give your husband condom anytime he's going out. Home. Some, some people have had that kind of experience. Yes. They now get married. I want to almost institutionalize that process. And the man is like, I made a covenant to God, I'm not going to sleep with another woman. Mm -hmm. It's not about you. Mm -hmm. But then she has come because she was exposed to, to something. Oh, situations where my mother was the first mm -hmm. wife in the house, my father treated her badly, then married other women, then told her not to work. I've seen situations like that. Mm -hmm. And the daughter has now decided that in her life, no man will treat her the way her mother was treated. True. True. And that now shapes her behavior. Sure. Let's make excuses. Let's not excuses, but let's make allowance for people. Let's accommodate people because we see their patterns. So the reason why I twisted this is so that the man who is listening, mm. who has probably experienced this, mm. can see it from a different light. Yes. Because if we didn't throw more light, yes. he wouldn't learn yes. to actually make that yes. excuse. Yes. So I'm sure that this would Yes. you know demystify it for him yes, yes. and look deep down to yes, see why yes, yes. you know it was what it was yes. and then maybe yes. begin to change yes and, and sort of yes and help her in in yes. her transition and some people it's trauma it's trauma. a trauma trauma you want us to live in a house where your mother was marginalized consistently I know. and then you not get married your mother tells you that you know how they treated me in this house please so as you are going mm. you have to dear, be wise though. You have to be wise. Love. Open your, open eye, your eyes. eyes. Let you your eyes be shining. And the, mother, the mother is giving a genuine because that's her experience. True, true, true. Right? And then you now go there and meet an amazing guy. And then you treat him like your horrible father because of your experience. Mm. You too, all of us, let us all learn that your experience that you have sometimes in your father's house is not what you're going to become your reality. True. Yeah. 
Thank you so much, ma'am. Um, I'd like to just ask for you to give one woman out there, you know, one reason, outside all we have spoken today, you know, one reason why she should go out of her way to make that, to take that step to begin her real estate investment journey. I'll share a scripture. You know, the Bible says that it's a, it's a good man that leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And when the Bible describes you as a good man, uh, you know, it's not necessarily gender, right? It's both female and male. And that's my charge to you. It's a scripture in the Bible. That's my charge to you. Leave an inheritance for your children's children. And one way to do that is by leaving real estate investment. I started a story with my grandfather, who today, 100 years after, his, the real estate investment he made in the 1910s is still existing today. Yes, the most economic value has, has shifted from that community, but it's a reference to a good man who has left an inheritance for his children's children. So my charge to you is think about your generation, think about the next generation and invest in real estate. Amazing. Thank you so much for joining us today, Ma, and for sharing from your um, world of knowledge and experience um, yet again. Um, I'd like to say that stories are important. They help us um, connect the dots backward and help us move forward as we journey in life. And so with these stories she's shared today, with the experiences, I hope we can make you know, that change, that decision that would help us you know, um, forge ahead and, and make the difference that we need in not just our present day, in our generation to come. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, don't forget to like, to share, and to Tell everyone in your community to join the CEO um, of Lagos channel on YouTube and to begin their own journey in the real estate space. Thank you. <laughs>